Welcome back, whiskey fans. It's Lefroy time. So I'd be lying if I said I hadn't been looking forward to reviewing this one for quite some time, and that's because I'm on record saying that the last two batches of the Laphroaig 10 cask strength that we've had have been much more on the milder, sweeter, less aggressive side. I think that Laphroaig in general has been getting sweeter and more inoffensive over the last 10 years, and the recent batches of the 10 cask strength really highlight that. So I've been very, very eager to get my hands on this. This is the batch 15, bottled in December 2021, to see if we're going to continue with that trend. And I think I'm not alone in noticing that I think Lafroy has been getting sweeter and milder and less, less offensive over the last few years. More than a few people have expressed a wish for Lafroy to go back to using at least a percentage of refill casks. Because for quite a while now, Lafroy has been using 100% first fill bourbon casks for their 10 year old whiskies, which, to be fair, does give that very recognisable, repeatable, sweet caramel and vanilla profile. And I do absolutely agree with those people. I think that some refill probably would make things a little bit more interesting at Lafroy. I am. I'm on the record as saying that I'm generally a fan of long-term maturations in perhaps second or third fill refill whiskey casks so that you really get to let the spirit stand out and get the full benefit of the age rather than having the whiskey, the final product, too dominated by the cask. But on the other hand, I can also see why Lafroy have gone down this route of having first fill bourbon casks for the majority of their whiskies. You haven't got to worry about cask management. You haven't got to worry as much about blending and vatting things together to make consistent batches. Consistency in general, you would think would be less of a worry and less hassle when you're using first fill bourbon casks, which should all be very similar to each other for every single cask. And obviously, I think that that sweeter profile probably has more broad general appeal. It's probably doing Lefroy and Scotch whiskey in general a bit of a disservice though to say that it's just down to the casks which are resulting in this change and resulting in the whiskey that we're getting out of Lefroy. There's obviously a vast multitude of factors that are coming to play that give the flavours that we get in the bottle. I mean over the years Lefroy have gradually switched to using a lower percentage of their own Lefroy floor malted barley in their whiskey. And that could be another reason why we're seeing differences in the whiskey these days, because floor malting barley is a very time and labour intensive process. And if you're trying to keep up with demand, trying to keep production going, then lowering the percentage of floor malt and relying more on the industrially produced bought in malt is one way that you can do that. Also, fermentation times, if you cut down on the amount of hours spent in the washback, that's going to increase your output. And just basic variation in the barley that you're getting from your suppliers, and variation in the casks that you're getting from those bourbon distilleries as well. There's lots of factors there that can result in a change in the finished whiskey. I do think that it's also important that we mustn't forget as well that everything changes over time. No whiskey stays the same Maybe year to year you'll get a consistent product, but when you're talking about decade to decade, then it's very unlikely that any distillery is going to stay exactly the same. I think that if you compare the kind of more dry, edgy maritime Lafroy that we used to get around 10, 15 years ago, then yeah, obviously there's a difference between that and what we get now. But if you compare that old Lafroy to what you got 10 years before that, then there's an equally large deviation there as well, with the Lefroy that we were getting, say, 20 years ago, perhaps being fruitier and also possibly slightly sweeter than what we were getting from Lefroy 10 years ago. Whiskey is, for want of a better word, a natural organic product that is in a state of flux. Anyone, including distillers, that think that you can get a completely consistent product bottle to bottle, year to year, decade to, get it to decade, is deceiving themselves. It is changing. It does change. There are changes. 
I also absolutely have to point out at this point before I get carried away on a rant again that I do think that even the batch 14 of the 10 cask strength is still really good. I think that, as I said before, it is simpler and more rounded and just slightly less interesting than previous batches. But I think even the batch 14 is still excellent value for what at the end of the day is an aid statement cask strength Isla whiskey. You can get a bottle of the Lefroy 10 cask strength for around 70, 75 pounds, at least here in the UK. And when you compare that to what you can get from random example here, Lagavulin, you look at what you can get from them for 70, 80 pounds, so slightly more than what you pay for this. And they're offering a 16 year old at 43%. So really, we shouldn't give Lefroy too much grief, at least not over the 10 cask strength, because they're still offering a really good value. It pains me to say this, but really well presented whiskey, at least in terms of ABV, because we must all realise that when you talk about cask strength, age statement, Isla, those three terms together, you generally don't get much for your money these days. So Lefroy 10 cask strength, batch number 15, original cask strength, bottled December 2021. Let's get some in the glass. Because, as they say, it is one of the most richly flavoured all Scotch whiskies. Let me show you the back label as well. And interestingly, talking about that back label, I think they have actually changed this year. One of the things that really annoyed me before. Because amongst all of the marketing blurb, they do say that this is non-chill filtered, so brilliant. They also tell us it's bottled at natural cask strength, so even better. But if you read down here, it says we recommend you add a small amount of water to your whiskey to fully appreciate the taste characteristics, blah, blah, blah. So they recommend that. It's not necessary. We're all adults here, hopefully. We know that we can take cask strength whiskey at full strength, but they're saying add a small amount just to open it up and develop a bit of character, maybe make it a bit more palatable. When you compare that to batch 14, they had that bizarre statement where they said add twice as much water as whiskey. <laughs> so that that probably knocks it down to about 20% if you add twice as much water. So I'm glad they've got rid of that bizarre statement because I don't know, I really hope that people haven't been buying this stuff and pouring 30ml of whiskey in a glass and then dumping 60ml of water on top of it because that's a massive waste of time and money to buy cask length whiskey and then water it down that much. So it's good that Lefroy have corrected that. That's enough waffle, let's get some in the glass. As for natural colouring on this Lefroy 10 cask strength, obviously this is a whiskey that you produce for the whiskey geeks, the whiskey nerds, the whiskey connoisseurs, people that are interested in a proper presentation of natural whiskey. Obviously that is a coloured whiskey. I don't think it says anywhere whether it is or not, unless it says in a foreign language somewhere. But I don't think it says anywhere, but the fact that they haven't told that it's natural colour means that they either are adding natural colouring or they want the option to be open later on to change their mind and add some at a future date. It's not good enough. And in my opinion, that's definitely an artificially coloured whisky. But that's nothing unusual when you come to special edition whiskies from Lefroig. Artificial colouring polluted with spirit caramel, burnt sugar. It's pretty much par for the course. Anyway, let's not dwell too much on the negatives. What does it smell like? I think that with this batch of Lefroig 10 cask strength, I'm getting a particular emphasis on that bracing salty sea air quality. 
It's quite a maritime batch of the Lefroy cask strength, getting notes of rock pools and some really nice salty peat. It's also quite a farmy quality with the peat in this one. Farmy, cow shed type peat. Some more salty oak, quite an oakiness on the nose of this one. Wood smoke, quite medicinal, iodine, disinfectant. And in with that salty, woody note, there's quite a, a hint of licorice. What is interesting on this one though, so I'm getting more of a, a citrus note. And it's a background note, but I think that there's more of a citrus characteristic on the nose of this batch. As well as a very pleasant, fatty, oily greasiness on the nose. Let's see how it tastes. So I probably should have mentioned that I haven't added water to this. I have added water to this when I was tasting it before. I've got through quite a lot of this already, so a well-developed opinion. But this is being tasted at cask strength here. On the palate, I'm getting some really nice, chewy, peated oakiness. Really nice, oaky quality to this whiskey. And I think that's something that I've started to appreciate more and more with these high-strength Lefroigs. That it's not just the sweetness and the caramel and vanilla and honey notes that you get through from those first four bourbon casks. But I think that Lefroig has a very unique woodiness and it's a very pleasant woodiness. It's not planky, it's not like that tannic oaky note that you get from chewing on the end of the pencil. We're all familiar with that. But there's just a really nice dense wood note in Lefroig that I don't think you get in too many whiskies. It's exactly the right amount of oakiness that it's not too much. I am also getting lots of those trademark Lefroig first full bourbon cask, peated bourbon vanilla notes, as well as quite a strong farmy note to the peat again, so cow shed type peat, as well as lots of caramel. But I think the important thing with this batch 15 is that it's very well balanced. I think much more balanced than the previous two batches. It's going to have one more sip. quite a spiciness on in particular the late palate of this and I think that leads out of that dense chewy oak note that you get on the palate turns into that very subtle well-balanced oak spice notes and on the end of the palate a lovely salty oaky edge as for the finish on this one I'm going to say at least medium long edging into long and lots of sweet smoky salty oaky notes so here's the verdict, drum roll. I do think that this has improved a little bit. I think that this is, to my tastes at least, and hopefully if what I've been describing in the tasting notes makes sense to you, perhaps to your taste as well, I think that this is, without a doubt, an edgier, more feature-packed Lefroy 10 cask strength than batch 14, probably more so than batch 13 as well. I think that that extra dry saltiness is welcome, as are those rock pool notes and that slight citrus note which is growing compared to the previous batches. It all just makes it a much more complex 10 cask strength than we've had for the last couple of batches. All things that just weren't present or weren't present enough in those previous two. Now I did mention that I'm drinking this at full cask strength which is 56.5% ABV. And I think that's fine. I think that a whiskey like this, I might add literally one or two drops into it. So I'm literally talking like a couple of milliliters of water. But I'll probably drink the majority of this at cask strength. The previous batch from, well it's not last year, because the previous batch was bottled six months before this one. But the batch 14... That was actually 58.6% ABV, so the ABV has gone down a little bit by around 2%. But I think that that 56.5% ABV, what does it mean that the ABV has gone down? Possibly that some of the casks that I've used in this are a little bit more, they're breathing more. 
so less dense grain on the oak. Might just be some random luck in there that this is from some more active casks that, that allow the whiskey to breathe a little bit more and move it along a little bit faster, perhaps. But I think that 56.5% ABV is nearly a perfect drinking strength if you're experienced with your cask strength whiskies, and it's enough that it has a lot of flavour and a lot of power behind it. But I have tried this stuff with water as well, and I think that it swims really well. I'm really glad to say that it develops nicely, adds that bit more complexity when you add a tiny bit of water to it. You get a little bit more of that citrus note, kind of smoked oranges coming out, and more of that really nice greasy, oily, farmy quality. I think that this batch 15 is excellent at any strength, except perhaps 40 because obviously us whiskey geeks, we don't want that crap that they put into the bottle with all of that water for the standard 10 year old. We buy this Laphroaig 10 year old cask strength for a reason and it's not to add twice as much water as whiskey. So I think that I'm really pleased to say that there are some improvements here. I still think that there's room for further improvement but I think that I'm pleased to say that we're now getting back to where we were a couple of years ago with the 10 cask strength and once again it's worth a solid B+. I think that this is a, a more challenging, more raw and more interesting whiskey which is exactly what you want from a, a cask strength Isla whiskey. So yeah, basically I think all is well, panic over. We can rest easy that Laphroaig still know how to make decent whiskey when they don't water it down too much anyway. Final parting note, I am really glad that this stuff is better, but go and check out Jeff at G Whiskey's review of the cask strength batch 14. That's a really good review from an excellent channel. Thoroughly recommend that you go over there. I expect most of you guys watching my channel are probably subscribed to him already, but check him out if you're not. I hope that you've enjoyed this review. Let me know what you think of this stuff when it becomes available to you and you get a chance to try it. Thanks for watching and cheers.